How's it going YouTube? Today I wanted to do an ancient inheritance guide to help all of you better understand how the system works as it can be quite confusing for many newer players and it's hard to know what options are best. Starting off, this is a two week event and there's a few quick important details that you must understand to succeed in these events. Number one is that gear is scaled back to the point where it almost doesn't matter. So you do not need to pick your best geared units. The only thing that matters is the set that they have. So things like counter or speed it is also very important no matter what you do is to spend your energy, which is going to be on the top right here. You'll see these are also called expiration provisions, but you're going to want to make sure to spend them all the time. Never have them capped out, whether that be spent on exploring, opening chests and scrolls, or fighting monsters like the warden or the boss. And as far as what to spend your XP on, this is going to be the biggest first steps to pay attention to. This down here is your exploration level. Each exploration level, you're going to be getting a class enhancement point. These are going to be where all of your stats come from on your characters. This again is going to be my biggest point out to you guys is that you should only focus on one, two, or three classes. I would always recommend two being warriors and soul weavers, but if you really like using rangers, you definitely can. Things like Isaria can be paired up very good with Tamarin, and also SSB and Landy are great picks. As far as what to collect, I would recommend that you guys do not collect chests or other resources on the first two floors because the rewards are much higher on stages three, four, and five. So these chests right here, I would not recommend collecting until you get to zone three. And this is what a scroll looks like. These can also give you class enhancement points and stuff like that as well. And if you guys are enjoying this video, I would appreciate it if you could scroll down and like. And if you would like to see more videos just like this one, make sure to subscribe while you're down there. Now back to the video. I wouldn't ever recommend killing random mobs as it is quite a big waste of expiration points. Your energy is better spent exploring in scrolls and opening chests and fighting the wardens on early stages. And as far as what units to use, there's going to be a few good options. And this is where it can get fun. Going back to the class enhancements, you're going to want to plan ahead. So know where to begin. If you're going to only want to use, like I said, warriors and soul weavers, which is what I would recommend, then go ahead and make sure to pick the correct ones. People such as Conquer Lilius and... Sermia are great warrior picks just because of the flat out damage they can do and conquer Lilius truthfully is a, I would recommend always picking if you do have her. A big thing to note is the dual attack synergy from soul weavers like Sangelica and Cerise and conquer Lilius. Even though she's not a soul weaver, she does offer dual attack, which is a huge thing. Kitty Clarissa is also another good pick as one of the artifacts she can use enhances her dual attack percentage. But many strong warrior picks such as Luna, Holiday Euphine, and Cigarette are super good for melting those bosses. Overall, Ancient Inheritance is a great place to get rewards and use units that you don't have built because of the automatic six star and max awaken and max mole enhance. So when you do go to endless, make sure that you get things that synergize. You also do get super good pieces of gear during the whole event, so make sure you're helping your guild out as much as possible. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to check out my other Epic 7 guides on my channel and make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell so you don't miss out on more videos just like this. Peace.